Hey guys, today I want to say I had a little bit of a sub boost, so I would like to thank some of the people who did subscribe to me, and to those people who are subscribed to me, if you haven't clicked on the notifications bell, well, you may want to do that. Also, I want to do something a little bit different. It seems to me that I am a little bit late in the response to the Christian hypocrisy, excuse me, uh, response to Stephen Hawking's death. Uh, no means to copy anybody. Serious, I'm talking about you. But all regards, your channel is cool. And those people who haven't subscribed to Sarah's, his channel is in the description link below. But anyhow, today it seems that I picked off one of the Christians who, of course, made a response to Stephen Hawking's death. This guy was pretty much a real easy, low-hanging fruit, so it wasn't too hard, I'd say, to uh, pick him off. So I just read... Oh, this guy is extremely hot. And I'm really getting horny over him. But there is one thing that he should do. Your puppy's looking cute, he's the perfect thing to shoot. So you take out your cell phone to capture. But there's one little flaw and it could blow it all if you film in portrait mode. So no, don't you hit record and no, then upload online and no, we can't see all the picture. No, it's a vertical video crash. You should turn your phone Your video should be filmed in landscape mode Or those black space on each side makes me want to cry Stop filming in portrait mode Online that Stephen Hawking passed away And the crazy part about it is Is that if the Bible's correct He is currently burning in hell Wishing that he had Okay, this guy's really turning me off now We had a good thing going Until he started talking about fire and burning while he was in the fire station uh, yeah this dude is fucking ridiculous accepted the fact that god had created everything that's so crazy right okay i'm even more turned off now that the guy said that he wants somebody to burn in hell for something that they said and this guy is supposed to be a first responder. I'm sorry, but if I lived in his district and I had an emergency, I would not be pleased to see this guy show up in my house seeing the fact that he may actually do, not do his job, I meant to say, and let me die since, of course, I'm an atheist. <sighs> Like, the number one scientist in the world, who is famous here, has just bit the dust and entered into the pit of eternity. For the fear of God was not in it. And this is why I despise this person. Why would anybody be so happy that somebody died because they stated that there was no evidence to conclude that there was a God? I know I said this before. But of course, if I had died and went to heaven, and it was the Christian heaven, and of course Yahweh was burning Adolf Hitler for eternity, I would be appalled, and I would say, Why are you, Yahweh, the most powerful being in the universe, burning Adolf Hitler for eternity when you could just erase his entire existence. And has rejected the Son of God. Whew. You know what? We all deserve it. The God of his love has made a way for us. Who cares if he rejected your God? That's not the point. The point is, Stephen Hawking's didn't die because he rejected the claims of Christianity, but he died because of ALS. And as many Stephen Hawking's 
that may have died from Lou Gehrig's disease, there is probably hundreds of thousands of more Christians who died from ALS over the past couple of years. Christian idiots like this said it before Stephen Hawking's died that he had ALS because he rejected Yahweh. How fucking stupid. See this guy here? Yeah, of course. He was a safety for my NFL team, and he's a Christian, and he's still alive after battling ALS for more than 10 years. But clowns like this fireman think that shit like this never happens to people who are Christian and only things happen to people who are atheists. Yeah, Steve Gleason, like I said, was a safety for the New Orleans Saints. He's battling ALS. And you know what? He's still alive. Thanks to technology. Don't be like Stephen Hawking and deny God. Yeah, don't be like Stephen Hawking and make about $2 million a year for exploring the universe and helping other people discover how the universe works. No, be like this idiot who is probably worse than Heath Ledger's Joker. Seriously, the guy who I am responding to needs to be put in a mental asylum, period. I mean, you can see the way he's acting here is ter terrible. Excuse me. You want to know how I got these scars? My father was a drinker. And a fiend. And one night, he goes off crazier than usual. Mommy gets the kitchen knife to defend herself. He doesn't like that. Not one bit. So, me watching, he takes the knife to her, laughing while he does it. He turns to me, and he says, Why so serious? comes at me with the knife. Why so serious? Sticks the blade in my mouth. Let's put a smile on that face. And... Why so serious? Alright guys, well... I was going to cut this video short anyhow because of how lunatic this guy was. And I really just didn't want to keep showing how much of a fucking hypocrisy he is. I mean, really, to be honest with you, he's not following code of ethics for, of course, first responders, so to speak. So I really question whether or not he should even have a badge as a first responder, period. But, um... I will say thank the flying spaghetti Pokemon that, of course, I am doing this because, like I said, I just didn't want to put you guys through all the bullshit. Um, I will say, however, that I will be doing videos on Ray Comfort over the next two weeks, I think. Uh, he has some videos about evolution and homosexual marriage, so I kind of want to get a little bit into his bullshit so that's pretty much what I'll be doing. I have a few of his videos uh, ready to be edited. So, um, of course, look for those to come up. And thank you. From the outside, you can tell what is inside a black hole. You can throw television sets, diamond rings, or even your worst enemies into a black hole, and all the black hole will remember is the total mass, and the angular momentum, an electric charge. Quantum mechanics implies that the whole of space is filled with pairs of virtual particles and antiparticles that are constantly materializing in pairs. 
and then coming together again and annihilating each other. One member of a pair of virtual particles may fall into the hole, leaving the other member without a partner with which to annihilate. The forsaken particle or antiparticle may fall into the black hole after its partner, but it may also escape to infinity, where it appears to be radiation emitted by the black hole. The message of this lecture is that black holes ain't as black as they are painted. They are not the eternal prisons they were once thought. Things can get out of a black hole, both to the outside, and possibly, to another universe. So, if you feel you are in a black hole, don't give up. There's a way out. So Stephen, everyone wants to know, what was around before the Big Bang? Nothing was around before the Big Big Bang. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, space and time together form a space-time continuum or manifold which is not flat, but curved by the matter and energy in it. I adopt the Euclidean approach to quantum gravity to describe the beginning of the universe. In this, Ordinary real time is replaced by imaginary time, which behaves like a fourth direction of space. Mm -hmm. In the Euclidean approach, the history of the universe in imaginary time is a four-dimensional curved surface, like the surface of the Earth, but with two more dimensions. Jim Hartle and I proposed a no-boundary condition. The boundary condition of the universe is that it has no boundary. Okay. In order terms, the Euclidean space-time is a closed surface without add, like the surface of the Earth. One can regard imaginary and real time as beginning at the South Pole, which is a smooth point of space-time where the normal laws of physics hold. There is nothing south of the South Pole, so there was nothing around before the Big Bang. I see great dangers for the human race. There have been a number of times in the past, when its survival has been a question of touch and go. The Cuban Missile Crisis in 1963 was one of these. The frequency of such occasions is likely to increase in the future. We shall need great care and judgment to negotiate them all successfully. But I'm an optimist. If we can avoid disaster for the next two centuries, our species should be safe as we spread into space. If we are the only intelligent beings in the galaxy, we should make sure we survive and continue. But we are entering an increasingly dangerous period of our history. Our population and our use of the finite resources of planet Earth are growing exponentially, along with our technical ability to change the environment for good or ill. But our genetic code still carries the selfish and aggressive instincts that were of survival advantage in the past. It will be difficult enough to avoid disaster in the next hundred years, let alone the next thousand or million. Our only chance of long-term survival is not to remain inward-looking on planet Earth, but to spread out into space. We have made remarkable progress in the last hundred years. But if we want to continue beyond the next hundred years, our future is in space. That is why I'm in favor of manned, or should I say, Personed space flight. <laughs>